Hey guys, welcome to this video tutorial. I'm going to show you how to get started with making 2D platformer in Unity. So first of all, you need to sign in with your account. Once you've got that sorted out, we need to click on New. And in here, um, just identify a folder which you're going to use um, for Unity. And maybe we'll just call it 2D Start. Uh, and we're just going to change this to being a 2D game. Um, we can, don't worry about the analytics and we'll click create project. So Unity is going to load, it might take a moment and that's okay. Um, once that loads up, we'll, so we'll see how this goes. So it might be a little bit slower on the school computers, but that's okay. Um, we might just quickly set up our window for Unity. So on the right, uh, this services tab loads up. We don't really want to see it, so we can just right click on it and click on close tab inspector we will want to see more of. Uh, this is sort of our hierarchy for where things are going on and we'll explain that later on as we go. We've got this area here, scene and game, again we'll explain as we get to it. Asset store, that's a later issue. Uh, and down here just sort of where all of our elements are going to be stored. So the first thing that we need to do is just start working with some assets. So if you just download, uh, and I'll put the link on the um, YouTube video at the bottom in the comments. Um, download this sprites set, sprites.png, and what we're going to do is just put on your desktop and drag it into your assets folder. And this will import it, and um, that's sort of the first thing about bringing any asset or thing that we want to work with in future into Unity. So we're actually going to end up with maybe 50 different assets, so we probably should put them into some type of order. So what we might do is just sort of Right click here and go to create a new folder and we'll call this art. And from that we'll just left click and drag sprites into art folder. This will just help us manage our project later on as our project gets more complicated. So next what we need to do is um, look at this sprite sheet and um, break it apart into individual elements. So if I press the expand button you can just kind of see a whole blur of things, just not in a whole lot of detail. But what we're going to do is just click on sprites and on this right hand side in the inspector, let's expand my window, uh, we might just look at how this is going to play out. So the idea is we're going to auto unpack this. There's sort of, I think, 800 odd images on this little texture pack. And this is just free um, Creative Commons licensing, meaning that everyone's allowed to use it um, without any need to say where you got the assets from. And likewise, people who are making games would know where it's from. So that's okay. Anyways, so we're going to go to sprite mode and go to multiple because we have multiple images that we're going to break apart. Um, the next thing what we're going to do is pixels per unit. So I'm going to set this to 21 and this is just because um, we've worked out how big each pixel is going to be. Um, we're going to... what else do we need to do? Ultimately we're going to go to sprite editor. Uh, alpha source is okay. We might just change our filter mode um, to point. And this will just sort of make our images stay nice and clear. Uh, and we might just change the max size. So it's not ultra important, but essentially when you're creating computer games, you, you want to build for the lowest common denominator. So yeah, sure, you might have a 1080 in your computer or whatever the newer, newest and latest and greatest 3D card is. But let's assume this is going to be built for a phone and for someone's old iPhone 4. So we want to reduce the amount of working memory or RAM that this requires. So if we just change our max size, you can see that the resolution of our image is 692 by 692. We're going to change the max size to as big as possible without being little. So if we made it 512, we'd have a little bit of distortion in our image. So we might just change that to 1024, and that will just help it work. It'll mean that our computer or phone won't overload the RAM uh, needlessly. I um, think that's okay. Tight texture alpha. Awesome. And that's okay. Great. So, what we're going to do is click on apply. And next, we're going to click on sprite editor. So, here is the main event. These are all of the sprites available. So, I'm just using the scroll wheel and pushing the scroll wheel down to move around now. And essentially, what I could do is I could just sort of left click and drag around one. And this would identify and save that individual sprite. Could be handy if you've got 
a large thing, but uh, we don't, so I'm just going to undo that. Um, so this is where magic happens, it really is going to save us a lot of time. Um, so up the top, what I'm going to do is click on splice, sorry, slice. Um, keep, that actually might change that to grid by cell size. So our grid by cell, so pixel size, um, we've set it to be pixels per unit of 21. So we're going to say 21 and 21. And I'm just using the tab button to quickly go through here. Next is the offset. And this is sort of saying um, how far apart things are going to be. And we're going to say two by two, two by two. And next is the padding. And you can just see that if we zoom in uh, at the edges, that there's a bit of a, a buffer there. So we're just going to change that to two by two. And we'll leave um, pivot at center. And the idea is it's going to break apart each of these images into its own little rectangles from left to right. So if I now click on slice and slice, this will process. Hmm, that didn't look like it did a whole lot. Let's see what's going on here. Okay, uh, slice and apply. There we go. Uh, and that will happen uh, at a differing speed depending on your computer quality. Now, if I just um, close this box, down here you may not have seen, but this got modified. So I'll close this, and I'm going to come down to this bottom corner. And if I expand this arrow, you'll see that all of a sudden I've got all of these different sprites. And these are available for me to work with. So there's, what's that, 861 sprites. So that would have taken a long time to manually do this. So just with the scroll wheel, um, you'll identify some basic bits, and it, it could be handy to to sort of double click the picture if you want to see some detail or um, go back to the sprite editor if you just want to sort of see where things are located. Um, so there's different characters for example, different ground types as well. So I'm just going to close that. Uh, and to use these it's really simple. Let's say that this is the, the dude I want to work with, I'm just going to left click and drag him into my scene. So A, you can see that my character is here and B, we can see that he's in my hierarchy. Ultimately, I'll need to re rename this guy, um, but that's okay. Likewise, I could bring in this element, and this is sort of how I start to go about building a level, by sort of stitching these things together. Of course, if I was to press play right now, I don't think a whole lot's going to happen, but essentially we'll go from a scene view to a game view, um, so nothing's going to happen because we haven't told it to do anything. So, I'll cancel that. Uh, so this will conclude our first video. The next one, we'll look at how to actually use these things to create some actual blocks and we'll then start to program it later on. Thank you.